Hello again and welcome to Mance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And thank you for tuning in. Um, another week, another, well, uh, uh, stay at home is officially over as far as the stay at home order itself, meaning, yep. which really I don't even know what the stay at home original order was. I Try mean, to stay home. It, it expired. That's good news yeah. as of midnight last, uh, last night. night. I do think that, that like the single biggest impact from that because people weren't staying i mean you know it wasn't like you were forced to stay in your house or anything um was is that it changes some of the unemployment because prior to the 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 stay at home order ending um there were a litany of reasons why people could choose not to go to work now I think it's down to, I think you can still do it for childcare, like because people are really stuck, there's no schools or so, or um, I believe actual illness or actual quarantine. But like you can't, if your employer wants you back and is willing to give you hours, then you now have to take them. So it's a step towards that like re, you know, getting back to what was the, normal of our lives Re or recalibrating i mean yeah. i know because i'm organizing pork fest the yeah. porcupine freedom festival which will be up in lancaster next week and you know it's it's been hard just sort of working with the hotel yeah. working it's with a people challenge. trying to figure out how you can bring people yeah. in not bring people in all of that stuff but i'm pretty excited yeah. you know it I, is nice to see things i would tell you so oddly enough i have no problem eating in a restaurant i don't know maybe i'm just like i don't know like there's restaurants that have reopened with indoor seating and I, I mean, in the summer, I don't spend a lot of time eating indoors anyways, but I'm not super skeptical of eating indoors, but I have heard that. <laughs> because haven't we been eating well, indoors for months I mean, and months I, I in our own homes and kitchens? I know? am kind of surprised. How I've heard from, you know, people who I'm good friends with that just kind of catch me off guard because they're like, I'm not really ready to be eating in a restaurant though. And I was like, oh. I, I try to take in like everybody's concerns and more, you know, like, huh. and, and and that is how, you know, if we actually still lived in a free society, it would work, right? right? Different people have different risk profiles. I mean, I certainly know, you know, I've been reaching out to people specifically on the right to know panel, yeah. right? We had all those great yeah. right to know cases that came out that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And so I've been reaching out to some of the lawyers who were involved, you know, the ACLU, Gilles, I've worked with him on a lot of stuff. And so having to sort of communicate that idea of, hey, some it's people a, will be wearing masks, right. some won't, yeah. you know. But of course, whatever you want to do for you, yeah. go ahead well, and, and do it. Well, and certainly, now that, I mean, I, I say this to everybody. Um, we, the data just so radically changed from the middle of March. I mean, it's... No, I mean, the middle of March, one in ten people were dying. We were all dying. Well, that that, that, that wasn't the data. No, no but that, I'm saying, that was the claim. Right, well, that was no, what the projection that, was by, by somebody. Well, I don't the even, projection was at least 30 times... Yeah. Higher than, Higher than, than the worst the case. Worst, I agree. Yes. So now what is interesting to me, like interesting, literally like peculiar interesting, is to watch people and how people process or don't process new information and how you like a lot of people with wearing masks. And I used to wear a mask. I was wearing masks because I was like, I don't want to be dead. Um, and I also didn't want to spread it if I had it. But then now the more I've read things and the more I see the, the rate of the spread, you know, there are people and they're literally just doing it. And they say, yeah, but I just feel safer. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not a good so, attitude. So, so that's, that's not good. You know what? That's fine. If it's you fine, feel safer but not wearing really a mask, then go ahead and do your masquerade. Those of us who do not yeah, don't, subscribe don't to that. Don't give me the evil eye. Don't, yeah, just mind your own yeah, business. Yeah. Like, do what you need I mean, to I'm do, but a, you can't actually right. tell other people what they need to do to make you yeah. safe. Uh, the good thing, you feel safe. one of the good things that came out between last week's show and this week is the Parks Department, which Victoria Sullivan had been working with Mark Gomez over, I think that's his name, over at the Parks Department. Um, they did reopen the playgrounds and the courts, and he did say they're going to work at opening the splash pad. The dilemma is, is that they passed the city budget last week with no funding for the pools or splash pad for the next year. So I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, because of all the things that they needed to cut money on. I think we've pad. talked about this before on the show, right? right? Where there's this sort of 
Uh, it's 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 actually, I mean, it's sort of cruel and slightly manipulative, right? So anytime that there is an approach from taxpayers to say, hey, can we like, you know, cut this or yeah. help us out oh, no, here they always or cut whatever. The painful things. They, they, you know, they'll cut the lights on the bridges. They'll make the sidewalks or dangerous. Or they'll say, they'll that say the no sp splash pads, right. Right. you know. And it's like really out of all of the stuff we yeah. could have done, could we maybe, maybe have thrown a yeah. bone to, you the know, Manchester right. taxpayers and the, the little kids who want to have a fun summer after yeah. having a really, really Tough miserable spring. spring. Right. <laughs> um, on the restaurant thing, I was like, we, I went off on a tangent somewhere there. Um, so last night, Dan and I had to go up to the Hooks at Home Depot, and um, we were going to stop and get ice cream at the Pizza Man, which is just north of there. Um, and we ended up, it was, I got to give them credit. This was one of the most creative adaptations. Um, we ended up eating dinner. You pull in, and they had reservations, or if there was room. You They had their parking lot. Um broken up into however many letters are in the word anchovy because it's a pizza <laughs> place. Um, that many segments. You parked your car in a parking spot and there was a picnic table with an umbrella in that space. Oh, wow. So there was like, okay, you're at H. Right. And it was, and it was like, well, that's actually real. And they had, they had um, a bucket for all your trash mm -hmm. with a liner in it. And they had a bucket for your dishes like off on the ground. And they asked you to like put your stuff in there so that the server wasn't even handling your right, stuff. Right. Thought, but it's Whoa. also because the the ridiculous guidelines that they yeah. came up with. I mean, there's a four page thing just on the universe, like how to wash your hands. Yeah, I know. You know. So um, so I understand why people are doing that. Yeah. We went to Francafeurs over yeah. on. Um, here on the west side, yeah. or over there on the west side. And, you know, it was funny. We were also sitting out yeah. in the parking lot. And then Sunday night, we actually did like a fancy Real date night out at uh, Bedford Village Inn. You know, and the owners there, of course, had written this, you know, impassioned plea to the governor yeah. being like, guys, if you don't let us open up, yeah. we are all going to go out of business. Um, so, of course, with everything, there's this balancing act. But if you're working on data that was flawed from the start, yeah. there's no accountability, uh, the data came from unelected officials that then, you know, kind of went down the pike and then we ended up in this situation here in New Hampshire where bad decisions, mm. frankly, were made, you know, so it's good to see that we're sort of easing out of that and, you know, even though the numbers are going up, we still know that But they're it's going very, up like minuscule. You're well, like, the testing is going right. up, so the, of course the numbers are going to well, go and, up. Well, and I was reading, I, and I'm not going to remember the exact numbers, you can look it up in the Union Leader yourself, yesterday's numbers, the, the article from yesterday. So maybe that was the day before, you know, we've had it was like 95% of the deaths in New Hampshire were from um, health care facilities, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, something like 63% of them were people over 80, yep. which is higher than the life expectancy in New Hampshire. Right. Um, a large number or maybe it was 95% of the people were 60 and older. Like it, the numbers were not. Alarming. It, 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 the numbers they are, do not. Uh, they don't equate with what we're doing. What with the response? Yes, you right. know. So I'm going to stick with my. This is an economic. You know. This it's a is mess. a it economic. Is a mess. Uh, it's a government manufactured economic crisis, and I think it's important for people to remember that because you know everyone's going to frame it as the pandemic, but it's not the pandemic. It isn't because it was the, the hospitals were the overrun. Pandemic. It wasn't not because, here, anyways. You know, but I mean, there are some parts of our country where they did have. It got a little hairy, but it definitely was not. In I don't Hampshire. even think in the in the big places where the they. I think originally in wasn't there a problem in what like early early, but again. But you we don't, had you, ways to respond that didn't include what we did. Right. So anyway, the good news is we're opening up. The yep. emergency order has uh, lapsed, and uh, hopefully we can get back to normal. Yeah. And, and I know, think that just, I mean I think the ta I don't I don't know this, but I'm presuming that the task force is still working because pretty much every business industry, short of the Loudon Raceway, has some guideline to open by June 29th, except for the Loudon Raceway, and I'm sure they're I'm sure that's just they're trying to figure out how to get as many people as possible into a NASCAR race. But I do think that's all phase supposed to be phase one. All those so whatever industry you know haircuts. Well, if the numbers have continued to be, you know, flat, now they can go to, you know, the, the 
I don't know if it's going to still be up to the task force to say, okay, well, we're moving all these people to phase two, and here we've lifted these restrictions. I don't right. know. Right. I mean, I, I do think that that was another misstep, frankly. I mean, you can't Good close, idea, down, no. close down the state by decree and then reopen it by committee. The minute you have a committee, as we know, it the was, standing joke is, yeah. you know, You're a, never gonna a, get, a horse by committee is a, how does that sound, though? <laughs> it's, it's not good anyway, right? Because you have all these people weighing in. And I've made an effort. I paid attention. I went and read a lot of these mm. things as they were coming out. And frankly, it's it's a bunch of control yeah. freaks mm. with nonsense because if you are given the authority to try and make something as safe as humanly possible, which is basically what we've done now, then you're going to get people who are going to be like, well, in order to make it as safe as possible, we will close the splash pads forever. I mean, if we want to make the world as safe as possible, we should just all... Live in a bubble. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get one of those big so, uh, <laughs> those so bubble did, wrap things. <laughs> did, um, did you watch any of the State House stuff from Thursday? Oh. I mean, I saw the uh, I saw the photo that so they they had the for, for the viewers back home. So you know they met at Whittemore, Whittemore Center out on UNH, and uh, so it was the ice rink floor. They had the chairs six feet apart in a grid. Um, everyone was wearing masks, except there was a handful, sort of a caucus. Yeah, that said we're not. The well, there were two people. groups. There were people who medically couldn't, and I guess they were. I think they were in one place, and then there were like the the freedom. They called it the freedom. Right. Group or so, whatever. so you know, they they put them up there in the cheap seats. Uh, yeah. I called them the liberty seats. Yep. Um, and those folks uh, sat over there. But the irony was that lunchtime, lunchtime, came, and whoop, everyone well, took off so their masks. The way, and here's the they way they weren't the, allowed to go outside. Right. This is the way I, the day transpired from the bits I've got from when they arrived in the parking lot. Because it gets even weirder. They <laughs> arrive in the parking lot, <laughs> and they were m taken. More than one at a time via golf cart. So think about how small a golf cart is. No mask or anything required from the parking lot to the Whittemore Center. So there was no danger of contracting the virus from one another on the golf course. I mean, on the golf cart to get to the Whittemore Center. All right. So now then, once you're in on the floor, they were required to either wear a N95 mask, a surgical mask, or one of those shields. Those like, mm. look, they, you know, the surgical things um except for the freedom caucus which was over there so then comes lunchtime and i don't know if they were mandated because i know somebody from the freedom group said she went outside and she was like where is everybody what? but the people on the floor were not allowed to leave they had to stay in their seats and a box lunch was brought to them um at their seat and they were told that they had to wear their shields while they were eating but no masks right so then that hour when everybody's obviously able to contaminate the space if they had COVID um, ends and they go back into session. And now that lunch is over, everybody's back to mandated masks. And somebody, Rep Griffin from Goffstown questioned, she goes, but we weren't wearing them at lunch. Why do we still have to wear them? This doesn't make any sense. And the speaker was like, well, because that's the rule. And afterwards that night um, in depth, New Hampshire, uh, the skewed articles kill me. So they, they make it sound like, oh, the Republicans were just jerks because um, the Democrats failed to work with Republicans. That's really what it comes down to. They failed. Part of being um, in leadership when you're in, in an elected body is making sure you're working with the, your, the opposite party so that you're garnering a middle ground support. That's how... That's and, how and working together works. So you're talking about the two thirds majority. Yes. They so in order to, to suspend rules any rules, and... you were going to need two thirds majority. Well, that's a mathematical thing. So you might want to make sure you're including members. The Democratic leadership should have made sure they included members of the Republican Party so that they could get to the two thirds and do something reasonable. But they failed to do that completely. So the Republicans voted no, and they basically could not get a positive vote on anything because you required a two-thirds majority. I mean, so here's a question, and, and maybe this is something people can start to noodle a little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm of the opinion we probably have enough laws. Yes, How many I, more laws can we write? I would love to see the legislature get together and just start so repealing I agree. Get old, rid of know, stuff. old laws and things yep. that don't make sense, that are outdated, all of that stuff, right? But here's the question. 
So they, they, I don't think, other than I did see they're adding all these, like, 19 pages of amendments oh, to the Senate. Oh, and that'll bill. all So fail. there's a lot of, like, the bad Senate things that things are going to come right. out of the Senate, right. I think. But the question is, if genuinely they didn't meet, they didn't pass any laws, and nothing materially right. happened, no bad things yep. came of it, no whatever, then the question is, why, why we are we writing all these I laws? Know. Why don't um, we actually... Go back to limited, restricted government that works for the people as opposed to, you know, this this other thing we now have. It's it's crazy. And, you know, obviously these articles come out trying and it was they were so skewed that like we're trying to make the Republicans look like the bad guy of the day where the Republicans, you know, just work with us on um, the only thing that passed, which I give um, Representative Prout credit for. He um was a bill that had already, see the problem is, is some of the rules suspension that they wanted was to put in legislation that wouldn't get a public hearing, wouldn't right. go through the normal process at all. One of which was the constitutional amendment. Right. Okay, so you want to have a constitutional amendment with no input ahead of time. Uh, that's a good plan. Well, someone wants it, right. you know, and then you should follow that. So the only thing that did pass because it had pretty much been vetted it in its past, well, it because we've done, they've done it in the in prior years, um, was they allowed, um, if you don't know what a growler is, a growler is like a jug with a lid that you can go get beer put in. Um, in the Up until this whole pandemic thing, um, the only beer that could be dispensed in, a, say, Budweiser growler was Budweiser. And the reason for that was the, those, Protectionism. Right, those breweries, well, didn't want their name on a bottle that's got somebody else's beer in it. Okay, whatever. But during the pandemic, the problem that lied... During the government-manufactured yes. economic crisis... <laughs> is all these restaurants with these kegs of beer... Yeah, lost couldn't do anything because thousands, because thousands if you dollars. had like Keith Murphy's uh, Murphy's Tap Room has you know endless kegs, but they couldn't pour beer in a wrong growler. So all this piece of the only piece of legislation that passed it last Thursday was um, allowing different beer to go in different growlers. So that was hardly like a radical that would had been vetted. Before. See, I didn't actually understand that. I thought it was just actually liberal liberalizing it to say, oh, you actually are allowed to put beer in a I container think restaurants, and take it I think somewhere. restaurants already could, but I okay. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. So you I actually ended up going uh, up on Wednesday, I think. To, to file. To file. Yeah. You filed too, yes, right? I so I went up, uh, you know, cold. Someone came down. She had a mask on. She, like, notarized it. I paid her. And then we actually had all the, the future senators. Yeah. Which was nice because there's all, so many women right Yeah, that was kind of cool. We had, I think, six or eight. I think it was. Oh, it was at least six. I don't yeah. really remember. Um, group. And we got a cute little group photo. You know, people can see it at Carla for NH Senate or Carla for New Hampshire mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, I put the photo up. So that was sort of neat. You know, they came, they signed. Yeah. Uh, uh, Secretary of State Bill Gardner came down. I actually have a photo yeah. of um, in 2018, yeah. you know, where I'm shaking his hand. And then in 2020, where we're, we're like, like, that, like elbow bumping, you know. So, um, so, you know, we live in strange times. Yeah. But, you know, I think there's a real opportunity here, too. I think it's for, it, it makes, it does make you take... Well, different I kind of, notice, I think. But I also feel like, you know, as I say, I think we're over-regulated, right? Mm -hmm. So so there have been these sort of creative um, changes that have been done, you know, more outdoor seating, more, uh, you know, being able to pour beer in a yeah. different container. Yeah, yeah. Like just things where, you know, when I say we're over-regulated, I mean like there are just so many rules that everyone is just breaking the law all the time, even if they don't mean to because we have too many laws. Right. And so... I'm hoping what we can do is take this as an opportunity. Let's find those silver yep. silver linings yep. and let's be like anything that we deregulated in order to deal with this should be deregulated, period. Because yeah, clearly well, we don't I do need think that. that you're gonna see that. Like I'm looking at all this outdoor seating and I'm like, so if, and, if, and, if it was okay, you know, like there's always this bizarre thing that like normally we overregulate outdoor seating and we say, oh, you can only do this and you can't have alcohol and you, oh, because right. you know, bad things will happen. But now because we had to loosen things up, but you know what's funny? Nobody's been run over at the table 
while they're dining on the sidewalk. Because guess what? That's not generally what's going to ever happen. But here's the other thing, Tammy, and this is really something I genuinely wish people would understand. So if you're writing laws and you write every law for the worst case yeah. scenario, right? Like this is the worst possible thing that could happen in this scenario. You're creating a awful world yes. for for all of us to live in because the worst case scenario is an outlier. Yes. So we don't need to be like, I mean, it's like every time I go and testify in a bill at the state house and the first question inevitably is, but what about the child molester and you're like something? And then I'm like, yes, that is probably <laughs> like a real outlying risk, maybe a one in 30 million situation or whatever but what about the number the asteroid? is. But exactly. <laughs> but what if and an asteroid hits? What about the murder what hornets? If, what, if, right, what if you're sitting at an outdoor dining table and the asteroid hits? How are you going to be protected? So, so my point is just, you know, and then the other bad thing that happens when we, when we approach life like that, instead of approaching life like life's good, yep. uh, generally speaking, people are good, yep. you know, we should, and, and we should function in that sort of societal space instead of like pretending that everyone except the one person writing the law is a jerk and an evil person. Like, let's, let's stop with that. Yep is what happens is the more laws we write, then all you're doing is you're creating this opportunity where people start to think, well, if it's not illegal, it must be moral. And, and that, that they're is not, not the same thing. They're not always the work. same thing like, at all. I watched this documentary. There's things that I shouldn't, I, I believe I shouldn't do as a person, but I don't need a law to tell right. me that. You know, but but I watched this documentary and it was about, I think it was Bear Stearns, the, the one that went bankrupt in the 2008 mm -hmm. uh, economic crisis, also government manufactured. Uh, but the feds buying corporate bonds with that. Right. And, that and, and I mean, what, you know, we are seeing economically, <laughs> you know, all the homelessness and all the, the, the struggles, the opioid crisis, all these things that also strangely magically went away during. Although the they thing. did say now the opioid. Oh, problems yeah, because are well, back up. now, of course, they're like, oh, we've got a and scare you that, in a new way. And I don't even think that they're not, not problems. I think they exist, but I think we magnify them into well, the these. Thing is, oh, well, the magnification is. The manipulation, yeah. which is necessary for people to go, gee, I, I guess I need to like care about yeah. what, what the government's up to. It's, you know, people, it's become so shrill. Yeah. It's so loud. You know, it's, it's look at me, look at me in national yeah. politics, even in local politics. It's become quite yes, nasty. There, there like is. the name calling yeah. and the mudslinging. How about just no the... name calling? That's one of my, I try, and I'm sure I call people names sometimes. <laughs> and they probably really, really deserve it. But I mean, I just, generally don't call individual people but like i just don't i, I mean, don't know i guess i i don't know maybe i'm just i mean I, I i think you know there are better ways i think you know this is the marketplace of ideas yeah. and people should bring their ideas and their dynamism and their their like energy mm -hmm. and they should go well i think i have solutions and i will tell everyone you know yep. these a lot of the things that you and i talk about are just are things that I have consistently been saying yep. for decades. Yeah. And something like, you know, this this rallying with the police accountability yep. work. It's like, when did uh, that become like, a well, new issue? You know, I really issue do for wish a long time. people, you know, go back and look. You know, you can, you can track it in a magazine like Reason Magazine that libertarians, you know, the Dr. Pauls and the Rand Pauls and the yeah. Tom Masseys and those people, right, have been saying oh for decades and it's like well it's nice that everyone else is coming to the party but if we're right about that maybe we're right about a lot of things right. and maybe people should start to listen because we can solve these problems but what the democrats are doing isn't going to solve no them. and you know what i'm sorry to say even a lot of the solutions that the republicans yeah. come up with well, aren't think, actually right. i mean they don't even stick to the platform right. anymore um yeah i thought we would talk about who filed for office, but we're not going to have time for that. Maybe I'll do that next week. Maybe I'll okay. do a little bit more. I was like jotting down notes about well, like, Tammy I filed, filed. I filed. Yep. So you know uh, we've got, we do have, Dan, file? Dan did file okay. on Friday. Um, we have on the Republican side of the ticket, um, we have, I think, we have a bunch of primaries in the county race, and I know there's two primaries in the Senate races. Uh, Jack, I have a primary. Jack Kennedy's primary. <laughs> Carla, that's kind of funny. Um, not really funny, but... I mean, I'm sort of... It's like whatever. It doesn't really change anything. Um, and then there's another one in Senate 18. Um, 
But on our state rep side on the Republicans, we don't have any primaries, which I'm, oh, that's not true. Ward 12 has one. But I, I'm glad to see that. And we, we did fill almost all the seats. The holes are in exactly the same spots that they always are. Uh, the Democrats, on the other hand, have one, two, three, four, five, six. They have seven primaries in state rep seats. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, and then they've got a primary because some, somebody wants to take on um, Jerome Duval, who I actually don't dislike. Um, Mark McKenzie, who's the union hack. And I don't know, this third person are all vying to take on Ted Gatz's for executive council. Have fun with that. Oh, wow. Um, so before we run yeah, out of time, look at, we, we have wanted good to things. say we got some fan mail. So Mr. <laughs> Dobzanski. With a beautiful little son. Thank you for taking there. the time to write us a nice note and tell us that you enjoy watching our show sure. and are glad to see us that we're back in the studio. Um, so that, I think, makes four people that we know like our show. Um, <laughs> one is Dan, so and I don't I, know if that really <laughs> counts as a, as a vote for liking our show. But if you do like our show, or if you have any ideas, or there's something that you don't understand about the way the city runs or the state runs or who to contact when you have a problem, anything, feel free to email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. You can follow us on our Facebook page. We upload the show to YouTube every week. So you can find our YouTube channel and watch old shows if you missed them. Um, and then we share those over to our Facebook page. This week we were a week late, but don't shoot me. That's what happens <laughs> and, when gardening happening. And I, of course, also share everything. We yep. share them on my personal yep. blog, yeah. uh, you know, where people so, can I mean, find my positions. So, I mean, we have a lot and, of, um, we have a, you know, we got a good, we try to dispense out there. Um, but, you know, now that the filing period's over, it's time for everybody, all the viewers, to start paying attention to who's running in their district and if those people really do. Do you know what the primary date is? That's like, um, the, it's the in nine? Secretary. I don't know. It's yes. the second. It's the first Tuesday after the first Monday or something like I, that. I was September. just because uh, I booked my sister's 50th birthday. So, but that's after mid, mid Yeah, September. so you'll be fine. I think I'll um, be okay. Meanwhile, um, it's going to be up hot again later this week. Today's the last day in the 80s. And then I think it's going to be in the 90s for this week. So get out there. Dan and I have been making a... Concerted effort. Every Friday night we go kayaking someplace, I think. Oh, I want to do that again with yep. you this year. Definitely. Yep. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So get out there. The trails are busy. Trails are busy. Uh, moms and dads who are hanging out with their kids, continue to do it. Get them yep. out there. Let's, go use the playgrounds. Let's, let's create that healthy, balanced life uh, so that we don't need all this other intervention. That's right. That's all we got. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.